Hey guys, welcome back to the Frost Dog Garage. It has been a pretty rainy day here in the Mountain West, which is good. We've needed the water as we've been in a pretty severe drought. But rainy days equal, you know, go spend some time in the shop, which is what I've been doing today. So I'm just gonna walk you through kind of some updates on what I've been doing. Um, worked a little bit on some fuel lines, I've worked a little on, on the brakes. Actually, I got it quite a bit done on the brakes, but I'm gonna walk you through that and just show you what I've been doing. I'm just gonna pull this camera off. There we go. All right, just starting out with the fuel lines. Um, right now, I just have these uh, 3 8 lines run. They just run through the transmission tunnel, kind of the upper left side of the transmission tunnel, so they should be out of the way. I've got cushion clips um, holding them in there. And I haven't decided really if I'm going to go with this or if I'm going to opt for some stainless steel 3 8 hard lines. Um, I don't know, the jury's kind of out on that still. But these are, they're good for um, ethanol fuel. Uh, they can withstand it, basically, if, you, if you're forced to use it. Um, they are steel braided inside, and then they're wrapped in the in this sheath. So they should be pretty good. Only thing that I risk, really, is if there was some type of catastrophic failure with the drive shaft or transmission down there. It could potentially uh, cut a line, but that being said, I guess it could potentially do that to a, a stainless steel one as well. Just not, not as easy. Anyway, I uh, haven't decided if I'm gonna stay with these or if I'm gonna opt for the stainless steel. Back here, in the rear where I've got them routed, um, here's the feed coming off the pickup. They've got these quick disconnects. I'm hoping I don't run into issues with, uh, I mean, this. I think this one came with a kit. This one came with uh, one of these sending units that I that I ordered. So I've got, I've got a few of these. I'm hoping I don't, I don't get any leaks back here. Um, I know the, I think it's the Pro-Am one, it has some AN6 fittings, which would probably be much better than these, but hopefully these will be good. Um, so this feed one, comes around here and it's got another quick disconnect into the fuel filter. Another one coming out, 90 degree, and then the feed heads over the center section and uh, up that left side of the transmission tunnel. The return uh, is just right here. It kind of follows a similar path. Again, left side of the transmission tunnel. So hopefully those will work out pretty well. The engine is on order. I'm gonna have to wait a little while for it, so I'll, I'll fill the time with doing some other tasks that I can get done while I'm waiting on the engine. Um, for those who are curious, I did opt for the Blueprint 427 fuel injected stage two. So it's gonna be a bad boy in this, and I'll have to be careful with it in a vehicle that's only 2,400 pounds, and that uh, 427 will be putting over you know, north of 500 horsepower. So if this is the only chance I have for doing one of these roadsters, one of these kits, and I'm sure appreciative of, of my wife uh, playing along in this, as I'm sure many of you are. But uh, if I only get one, one go at it, I decided I'm gonna go big. And if for some reason it doesn't turn it or work out later, um, Maybe I'll sell, but you know, it's been a dream for so long. I, I just can't even imagine that right now. So anyway, sorry for the tangent. Jumping over to brakes. In last video, um, I was talking about, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to mount the, uh, the reservoirs, whether I wanted them up there on the, on the firewall somewhere or over on this side of the foot box. Uh, I watched some videos and I did see a couple where the guys had mounted them here, although the one I saw had an L bracket mounted to the top of this frame member, and then the uh, the reservoir mounts were then mounted to that L bracket, which raised everything up. And I was a little bit worried about having things up that high. I'm not sure how well the body clears, um, but I'm thinking that I'm fairly safe here. And 
I did have, because I'm opting for the hydraulic clutch, I had three of these that came in the complete kit. I'm opting just to use two. This one up front will be used for the hydraulic clutch. This one is gonna be used for the front and rear brakes. And I'll show those lines uh, here in a second. Now, how did I mount them? You know, I, I kind of thought about the L bracket. I, I thought about just drilling straight through the frame here and just having some some uh, nut the nylocks here on the outside but I just I didn't really like the, the thought of or the look of that ultimately I ended up using a step bit and I drilled the holes on this side of the frame uh, just large enough to be able to fit a 7 16 uh, pretty small socket through to be able to tighten those nylocks on the back side. They're basically internal now to the frame. Although I've got four holes here, uh, I may put a metal plate over this, maybe rivet it in place. Um, then I can drill them out if I need to remove it for some reason. But it's still kind of deciding how to, how to clean this up, but I will clean it up. Um, I like the way that this turned out. It, it looks pretty clean from the other side or if you're viewing it from the engine compartment. Uh, happy with that. Uh, I did take a fair amount of time doing some measuring. Um, I was also worried, are they going to be high enough here to be able to gravity feed the master cylinders there? So to evaluate that, I, I put up a water level, which is just a tube. You put some water in it, and then, well, this one actually had a little bit of oil on this side, but you're able to see whether or not, um, well, it just shows you level, basically. And if I put it up so the water is at, at uh, right about this lip, it will feed the uh, master cylinders. They're actually a little bit lower than here. So as long as I keep them topped off, uh, they should gravity feed. And I have noticed while doing the bench uh, bleed on them, there is a, a bit of suction involved as well. So I'm happy about that. Uh, speaking about the bench bleed, that's what I have set up right now. All these hoses going everywhere. Um, here in the front, you can see I do not have the brake booster. Um, I just decided I wanted to have a little more uh, pedal feel for the brakes. Maybe it'll be something I regret. I don't know. won't know until I drive it. But uh, because I do not have the brake booster up front, um, I had these extra lengths. Clean this up real quick. I have these extra lengths of the, uh, the hard brake line. And I just ended up using those and a couple extra fittings. And so I detached the main brake line down here and here for the front and rear brakes and attached these spare pieces. And I just ran them into the reservoir, topped off the reservoir, and just started to do the bench bleed, uh, just using the brake pedal as a lever to depress the, uh, the rod and, and cylinder to get the air out. I'm pretty much there. Um, there is not a whole lot coming out anymore. Uh, another thing that I did, because my garage, you know, most garages, they, they slant a little bit. So I took my floor jack and I put it under the front of the Roadster and I just slowly raised it while I was doing the bench bleed to make sure I got any trapped air uh, that might be, you know, a high point where air is getting trapped. And as I raised and lowered it, then I, I continued to do the bench bleed to try and get all that air out. And I think I'm just about there. So next, all I have to do is uh, detach these lines and then hook up the regular lines. And then I'll get my neighbor or uh, one of my daughters to come out and, and work the pedal while I do the bleed. I'll start back there in the, uh, the right rear or the farthest caliper away from the master cylinder. I'll start bleeding there and then the left rear and then the right front and then lastly, the left front and hopefully that bleed goes real well and and everything will be uh be ready to go as far as the brake lines and the routing or just working brake lines i did get a cutter a flaring tool um, and a bender but it's a bit of a i don't know it's a bit of a science or or technique i guess um i started using the tool to do some of the tighter bends here's one of them for example but the tool, it left some, some marks that I didn't really like. 
um, it would kind of score the, the line, and even though it would get it where I needed it to be, I, I just didn't like the, the finish. So in a lot of places, if the bend was not that severe, I would just do it by hand with my thumb and uh, hands. Are not, it's not too hard to bend this line. Um, and as long as you don't bend too much in one place where you could potentially crimp it, um, it actually works pretty well, and it, uh, it keeps it looking good. Um, I didn't really like that they had a, a union there. They had a couple of, I think, 20-inch pieces that you put together to go through this center center portion here. Um, I've seen people route it in other places. Ultimately, a battery box and battery will, will be right there. And I, I think I've got enough room for that. If anything, maybe I'll have to adjust how I've got these cushion clips. But I don't really like that. Just one more place for a potential uh, leakage. That easily could have could have been done with a, a longer line or maybe a 40 inch type line. So that's where I got it uh, routed in the front. Um, for the rear, I came off of the master cylinder uh, along that right foot box. I may have to cut out a little notch in the next panel to accommodate the, uh, the brake line where I have it going through here. It comes down this, this member and then it follows right here in the corner, the edge of the upper left uh, portion of the uh, transmission tunnel. So it comes down and then it rounds that bend um, I guess I've got it hidden pretty well. Can't even see it. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit right here. So around the uh, driver's seat compartment, underneath this this uh, frame member, and then down here I'll show you where I've got it. So the flex line coming off the caliper, um, yeah, it comes right up here. And you can just see, well, there's the brake line coming into it. There's a T there. And then coming off of this T, maybe I can see it a little better from this side, or this angle. There we go. Coming off the T, it follows right here above the center section. There we go. See a little bit better. Coming off the T, center section, and uh, over there to that caliper. Once I get it all bled, um, I can do an update on that and how well it worked. But it's coming along. Um, I don't know, hopefully this will help some people out. This is the way I did the bench bleed. Uh, you can also put it in the vise, do it that way. But hopefully this helps out. Um, if it does, like, share, subscribe, those types of things. And I'm enjoying watching yours as well. So until next time, take it easy from the Frost Dog Garage. We'll see you later.